The New York Jets, their season win total now is up to six and a half. I believe it was six before. They needed offensive line help, they needed edge rush help, and they needed wide receiver help. And they drafted all of those positions within the first three rounds. Uh, Not too shabby, really. They got uh, tackle Makai Becton out of Louisville. They got wide receiver Denzel Mims out of Baylor. And uh, so they got safety Ashton Davis out of California, who I think is uh, is pretty pretty freaking good. Um, I mean, that Cal defense was something to behold the last couple yep. of years. And you know uh, who knows how to play. Comes from a really smart coach. Yeah, Wilcox that, is is very coach, well respected. That coaches them up. Yeah, yeah. like that. I, I I get real biased when it comes from. It's hard for me to take a a defensive kid that's not a star stud. We've seen the elite athletes come from non defensive schools. Okay. But it's hard for me to take that second tier, third tier defensive kid from schools where the head coach or the defensive coordinator isn't just a just a defensive mind that we all trust and appreciate. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, along with that, they got edge rusher Jabari Zaniga out of Florida. They got, got a uh, couple of athletes from Florida. Yeah, they got uh, Lamichael P. Ryan out of Florida. They got quarterback James Morgan out of Florida International in the fourth round. Now, let me let me go ahead and hit on him. A lot of people really high on him. If this were any other organization that was not completely tied to their quarterback, I think you could see a situation where Morgan could eventually beat out Sam Darnold for that starting quarterback position. I think Morgan is an absolute stud. I think he is a legit quarterback. Uh, the last two years under Butch Davis, he was fantastic. I think uh, I think he's great. I don't think he's going to get a fair shake for the next few years, um, and and that's kind of what sucks is like they're going no, to go. The one all good in thing he's got going for him is the GM nor the head coach aren't the guys that drafted Darnold. That's true, and I mean I could be completely wrong on this. I, I mean I'm, I mean, I'm going to tell you that that's the best benefit is like like a young quarterback or another quarterback coming in to help Trubisky doesn't help a lot because the GM and the coach are the ones that drafted him. Yeah. They're they're married to him and they know their success is tied to him. I just wonder the if the people owners. in New York are not, and if Sam don't got it, are they going to yank him for somebody that they think's got it? I think competition is good. Yes. Okay. I get. I get. Let me go on a tangent for a second here. Go ahead. I I get crapped on by a lot of my Browns fans for like wanting competition for Baker Mayfield, and my argument is this doesn't make any sense that you don't want competition. Wouldn't you want the best? Like, you're so married to this pick and this guy being a star, but isn't it better for the team if the best guy, if somebody comes in and beats him out in practice and beats him out in training camp and wins the job, isn't it more important that the better player have the job, not the most deserving because of where he was drafted and what the team invested in? Isn't it, isn't it better for you, the fan, to have the best guy playing? Yes. Because I just had the same argument on draft night. When Jake Fromm went to the Bills, got a couple of Bills fan friends, and I was like, dude, I think – I'm not saying Fromm is going to beat out uh, Josh Allen, but I think it's a 50-50 chance that that Fromm could be a better quarterback than Josh Allen and win that job. And they all got mad at me, and I just said, isn't it – I don't get that you being mad that – what if this guy takes you all to the next level and wins the Super Bowl with you? Like, yeah, or, are you or mad just, then? Or gets you, you out of the first round? Then? You know, like a wins a playoff game. Yeah. I mean, uh, Patriot fan. there were a sec of Patriot fans that were pissed off when Drew Brees got healthy that Bill didn't give him the job back. Oh, and they, they were they, like, you can't lose your job to injury, man. Like, it's not cool. Like, he's the guy that we got paid. Yes, he was the star. And nobody knew Tommy, and nobody cared about Tommy. And then Tom won the Super Bowl, and it's all over. It's all over for Bledsoe, yeah. I'm with but you. you. But you. But it was better for the franchise for them. To, look, Bill saw it. Just trust the coaches and let it be a real competition. That's all I want is competition. Yes. My biggest problem with the Browns is it's not – Baker runs his yak a lot, and I get frustrated with that. My issue is simply he wants the job given to him, yeah. and I don't think anybody should have their job given to him. I think somebody should constantly be behind them pushing them. Well, I think that James Morgan is, is the type of quarterback that will push for that job. And uh, I kind of think Gase will, will, will give him an opportunity. That. I mean, I mean, I, like last year was crazy for Gase, and and yet, I mean, they still won what seven games last year? 
They won seven games. They had to do what? Six games without Sam? Four games without Sam? Yeah. Yeah. And and my God, it was a disaster. Oh uh, no, it was it was awful. But but to be fair, they didn't have anybody backing them up either. So no. you well, know. the backup wasn't bad. I was a boy from Northwestern, but and he he gets hurt in like the third quarter of the first game against the Browns, yeah. and then they go to the third string quarterback, and now it's nobody's three deep at quarterback. Who was that? Was that Luke Falk? No, it was uh, Simeon, Trevor Simeon. Well, it, Simeon, yeah, but the the third string I thought. Oh, was, who the third stringer was? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I thought I, I thought it was Luke Falk, and he ended up getting cut like almost. I mean, I'm, as soon I'm as sure, as soon as Sam got back, they're yeah. like, "You hit the brakes." Yeah, it was it was pretty pretty ridiculous. Uh, let's go through the rest of these picks here. Offensive tackle Cameron Clark out of Charlotte, uh, cornerback Bryce Hall from Virginia, who I think is a stud. Uh, cannot believe that they got him in the fifth round. And uh, punter Braden Mann out of Texas A&M. Now that might be their best pick of this entire draft because Braden Mann was a friggin' beast as a punter. Uh, Everybody but, in this division drafted a player that I don't think needs to be drafted in drafts. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, it kind of drives me insane. Yeah, I mean, Braden Man is is legit. Uh, who? Somebody else said that. Um, I thought somebody said it in the in the chat. Maybe not. But yeah, Braden Man so, is is. So legit. let me let, let's let's analyze this. Okay, you named off all the players. That's great. Let's 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 yeah. get down to the nuts and bolts of it. All right. Uh, Makai Becton. I, I've told you my thoughts on him. I would stay away from him. I didn't. I, he was I, without question in both of our minds the fourth best tackle out of all these yeah. big offensive linemen. He's, right? he's obviously the, massive, and and if you can develop him correctly, then yeah. yes, he's got all the tools that you need. Uh, but you know, I he never really stood like he was the best lineman that Louisville had last year. But Louisville's he line played was two trash. games his entire career against NFL talent. Yeah, and wasn't wasn't very good. And that's, that's it. He was tested twice in his entire career, and both times he failed those tests. And you know me. We've had this conversation. The PED scare coming out of college is real simply because I now don't know how much of your production is fabricated. Yeah. If you cheated on the test, I'm morally opposed to it, but I now don't know how to grade you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, wide receiver Denzel Mims in the second round. So, I have an opinion about this. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll toss mine back out there because I said it last week. It's – I like Mims. I like Mims a lot. I was very adamant before this draft happened that I think this is going to be an excellent draft for the receivers. I don't want to see any of them go to New York because that is a place where I don't think any of them can succeed. I I think – like, I I want to trust Gase – I think that if he can get the right I, I, quarterback in there, or, or at least get the the quarterback playing well, whoever it is, then I think obviously your wide receivers are going to benefit from that. But uh, Denzel Mims had had the dropsies a lot last year, and 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 not just last year. I mean, just over his career, and and I don't know that he's really developed in that area. He has got all the tools that you would need, other than that. He's big. He's fast. He's a, a pretty legitimate route runner from what I, you know, from what I've seen. Yeah. And you and I have watched Baylor a lot. A lot. You know, a, a lot, a whole lot. So I, it, I, for where they got him, I mean, they got him at pick 59. So oh, I think. Oh, yeah, no, he fe- I, yeah. I wanted to see him go to another team, almost any other franchise. I just don't trust this organization. He, he will take over uh, for Robbie Anderson, and I, I think he will be a day one starter. Um. But he, he's well, yes, got some he's, work to he's do. now instantly the number one receiver. Not a lot of these rookies are going into their teams being the number one receiver. Yeah, and and he will be. So, he will be. Not just the number one. There ain't a number two. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, <laughs> Michael said Gase looked grumpy as hell during the draft. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think. He put his kids around him, and it made it look even weirder to me. It was, was, it was strange. Like, I, before you were just this creepy old guy, and now you've got your kids around you, and it's just like it didn't soften you up at all. No, it really didn't. It really it did, didn't. It like you still look weird to me. Yeah, I mean, this it is was, coming from a guy that looks weird. Okay, I'm okay with that. But yeah, just, and so it's, as as yeah, far as their as far as their needs go, uh, they they drafted for their needs. 
They and, addressed their needs with yeah. the picks they took. I don't know that I really like the picks they took, though. I, and I, I'm in the same boat that you are. I just, I, I don't know. You know, I think they got some value at, at some of the picks. Um, yeah, no, they, they absolutely did. I mean, I'll tell you this. If the quarterback turns out to be their quarterback and, and he ends up being half decent and winning the job and becoming a starter in the NFL, that's hard to hate. But that's yeah. a that's, that's a big, big reach. That's a big if, man. Yeah, that's a that's a massive if. And the same thing with Becton, right? Like Becton, with as big as he is and everything, if he turns out to be a legitimate tackle, then yeah, you got him at the eleventh pick, like the fourth the, tackle taken the, in the draft. The, like, but here's the here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. All right, the the Texans had this problem last year, and they're going to have it again this year. By the way, of having one great tackle is awesome. When the rest of your offensive line sucks, it really doesn't matter. Now you, yeah, you it, it, the, the offensive line didn't get any better when when what's his ass went to went to Houston. Okay. Well, it, look, I'll say this: like they had two rookies starting last year. Like they, but, you know, the Texans. I, I think the Texans can improve. Hey, I'm not saying the Texans can't improve. I'm saying yeah. that adding him to a bad offensive line didn't make them better. No, they that's, were that's still bad. Point. Yeah. If Becton is the goods. Is the rest of the Jets' offensive line good? And does that make them good? Like, it's a step in making them good. Like, you got to yeah. get a free agent, and you got to draft another one next year, and you got to – like, offensive line is one of the hardest pieces to build because one great pl- – you can get a great edge rusher, and he can make a front seven look awesome. Okay? Yeah, yeah you're right. You can have the best tackle in the world, best guard in the world, if the other four pieces are crap. Your quarterback is still gonna get hurt. Yeah, you're you're right. You're right. Um, now I yeah. don't know that the Jets' offense is bad. By the way, I I haven't paid attention to their offensive line enough to care this early in the game. I'm gonna tell you this: their offense is shit. And if their offensive line was really good, and the rest of their offense was that bad, there's no fixing that. No, <laughs> there's no fixing that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, let Let's go with whether or not we like it. I. I'm gonna I, th- if there was a neutral feeling, and that's this is kinda, not a hatred for any of these teams. Let, let's 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 toss that in there. Let's let's make it neutral if we because I, I, I really feel like I just put my hand in lukewarm water to where I don't know that my hand is in water. I I don't like it, but I don't hate it. Like I, I could see it working no, out really I, well. Um, I don't hate it. I I like some of the players. I the the uh, the the kid from Florida, the edge rush from Florida. Like I think that guy's Zuniga. gonna be good. Yeah, you know, I, th- I think Mims has the goods, but I think he's gonna be a bust because I said this is my biases coming out in the yeah. grade. Any of these receivers are bust. I thought these. I thought this receiving class was gonna be bust proof, unless one of them went to the Jets, and then that guy's gonna be the bust. Their their first two picks are projects. Um, that have so. all of that's, the tools. That's hang on. That's a hard pill to swallow, though. Yeah. You're a bad football team, and the first two picks, you kind of need to be guys that you hit on. Projects are not hit on. Projects are yeah. Maybe we'll finish in a month. Maybe it takes six months. I don't know when this damn room's going to be done. Yeah. Maybe maybe it could take you know two seasons for them. I mean, we, who knows? We may so, never finish the bathroom and, and we if just it takes, sell the house as is. I'll say this. If it takes two seasons for Denzel Mims to become a good wide receiver and two but, seasons for Makai Becton to become a good offensive lineman, Gase will not be there to reap the benefits. I, absolutely. If it takes two seasons, then they are then they didn't – they weren't good. Yeah. So, it is <laughs> – The, it the is modern NBA, NBA. NFL, is, it's just different. It's yeah, different now. No, you're you're 100 right, right. Let's get off them. Let's uh let's move on. Let's go ahead. I like these other two. Let's talk about the Miami.